This podcast is scheduled for one fall. Whoa, who let you out of the basement? Let me do this. This podcast is scheduled for one fall, and I'm still not reading any of this other crap you wrote. So just click your buttons and start the show. Hello, people, and thank you for joining us today on another installment of the Gimmick Table Rewind. Rewind! I'm your host, Matt. Not only do parents not understand, but I don't understand him as well. Across from me, the DJ Jazzy Jeff to my fresh prince. He is Bats. Yeah, that's what's up in the house, motherfucker. All right, guys, in a few moments, a fan of the Fresh Prince, Benjamin Banks, he's going to return once again to be the first ever three-time, count it, one, two, three, three-time guest of the gimmick table. But before we get to that, anybody unaware? Triple rewind. Triple rewind. Excite Wrestling 6 was postponed due to a major storm in the Binghamton area. and That has been rescheduled for this Friday, May 16th. It's still taking place at the American Legion. Post 80 in Binghamton. It's going to be live on Twitch as well at twitch.tv slash Excite Wrestling. Bell time is going to be at 8 p.m. Make sure you catch that live. And again, if you can't, it's going to be streaming on Twitch as well. You won't want to miss it. All right, everybody, let's get to our guest back by popular demand. Everyone, welcome back to the gimmick table. He is Benjamin Banks. Why'd you take so long to say my name? <laughs> yeah, what? Like, what, like, what the do? hell is that, man? It's like, this is the third time that I've made an appearance on the gimmick show. Yep, that's right. I said it. The gimmick show starring Benjamin Banks. <laughs> and you take forever to say my name? Like, what the fuck? Oh, oh my bad. I didn't mean to say fuck. Oh, shit. I said it again. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, but yeah, what the hell is that? You really We, we make... were just gonna insert the money shuffle later. Like it was fine. Yeah, post, oh, okay. post production okay. the name would have okay. just swung together. Yeah, Bats man, get your boy, man. Yeah, like, yeah. He's uh, he's acting uh, wild tonight. <laughs> Ooh, yeah, bitch. Did we lose you? Is Mad Mag holding something? What's that, what's that suspicious item that he's pulling out from behind his back? <laughs> Oh, did you hear that? It's Benjamin Banks in the head with a frying pan. <laughs> Take that, you big mouth bitch! Get the hell off our ship. Uh, guys, who? What noise? What is going on? I'll tell you, you what's going on. Invaded, mother. By the noise pollution, daddy. Okay. The show just got louder than hell. Uh, and there's no way you can shut us up either. This is our show. We're here. Get him out of here. He's had his turn. It's our woo, 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 woo. Easy, 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 rock, easy, rock. Don't wear yourself out, brother. Okay, what's going yeah, on here? You guys, guys what I'm talking about. What? What? You're going to waste the American public's time with your, what, third interview with Benjamin Banks? Really? Three of them? No, you that's really ridiculous. need to talk to that man three times? And you only talk to us? Well, how many fingers am I holding up? Uh, what? Hold on. Wait. One, two, subtract. Yeah, what he said. To be what? fair, there's two of you, so that counts twice. Yeah, this, so like you guys coming on the show now would be like four hey. times. Yeah, this is hey, going to be your fourth interview, yeah. technically. We, look, we already we already did some math. Don't confuse it. <laughs> All right? your, logic, your logic is wrong because we don't have clones, so there's no way you talk to twice. <laughs> Well, okay, and also Matt even said, back by popular demand. I mean, we no, we're just people gi- just can't get enough of Benji. Right, we're just giving the people what they want. And we we said we could do another interview. You didn't have to interrupt Benjamin's interview. You know, this was a little uncalled for. Is he okay? I don't know. Uh, I, don't, I, don't, I, I think he looks like he's got a beer and a pumpkin pie. I don't know. I think he'll be good. How how's your pie, pumpkin? <laughs> Don't get a bit of that sweet tooth, daddy. Oh, no. <laughs> Have a Coke and a smile, Benjamin Banks. <laughs> you just hit them with the shit. 
<laughs> All right. I mean, I, oh, I, that's awesome. I don't know. What do you want to do, Matt? You want to interview these guys well, instead? <laughs> well, clearly we can't in- interview Benjamin if he's knocked out on the floor eating pumpkin pie. So, all right. As, as <laughs> long as you conundrum. promise, you promise us that there will be no more harm to Benjamin Banks. We will we'll do the interview with you guys right now. I'm not supposed to negotiate. What do you say, Rock? Are we going to leave him alone, or are we going we gonna to mess with him some more? Yeah, we should be good. Hey, cause he's out like a he's out like a baby, dude. Like I can I hear him snoring. Dude, he's over here sucking his thumb. Are you kidding me? What would you hit him with? <laughs> God. Did you use uh, your head mask? Uh, I think I, the bad one had some sort of unidentified foreign object. <laughs> I hit him with a UFO, Daddy. Yeah, yeah you did. <laughs> Saucer shaped and everything. You hit him with the unidentified frying object. Yeah, ah, got him. <laughs> what? <laughs> Guys, we said we said don't hit him again. There we go. Hey, hey, say it again. Say it again. All right, all right, all right, all right. All right so we got to obviously now we got to do a new intro and everything. Do we um, though? Yeah, we're gonna we gotta give them their proper, you know, intro to the show. Also, this is probably good evidence for the police, so we should just make sure everybody can hear that. So there's a <laughs> bunch of witnesses. All right, folks. So apparently the podcast is subject to change on the spot. So let's try this again. <laughs> Haven't seen this a hostile takeover Mikey. like this since Mikey. <laughs> Everyone, backed by even more popular demand, their own. Please welcome back to the gimmick table. They are Relentless Rock Richards and Mad Max Morrison. They are noise pollution. How's it going today, guys? It's going good, brother. Oh, wait. Or is it going well? Yeah, who the hell knows? Hey, you're in charge of the show, apparently, so any way you want to say it is good by us. We are not going to, you know, test the waters here this evening. Well, how long has it been since the last time you interviewed Noise Pollution? It has been seven months, actually, almost to the day. To the day? Almost to the day. Who's, ke- who's keeping count? Did you guys actually do your research, or are you just making stuff up to the pizza? So I, we don't you- I actually did my research, Bats. It's on my show notes. It's actually under question two. Well, I don't know about you, but I'm just coming to the realization that I've wasted seven months of my life, at least on this show. Wow, thanks, dude. <laughs> I appreciate you so much. Can you hit him with the frying pan next time? Oh, man, the way this interview is going, somebody needs to hit me with the frying pan. <laughs> I'm going to hit. Let me see that frying pan. Let me hit myself. <laughs> Come on, Rock. Hit me with the frying pan. Put me to sleep. Jesus. All right, all right. <laughs> so speaking of it being seven well, months, so, what's what's been so going? Basically, oh, for go the ahead. past seven months, your, ra- your ratings have tanked. <laughs> And now you're finally getting ready to put on a good show again. Is that That's because you were on the show they went down? Is that what you're trying to say? So hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. <laughs> so I think I recall in that that seven months, you guys also, aside from sleeping Kool-Aid man over here, you also <laughs> interviewed Urban Legend? We did. That's true. Swerving Urban. <laughs> Were you going Urban somewhere with that? Was, was there a follow-up? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, we interviewed him. You wasted your time. Who else has been on the show? Who else has been on the show? Do you want to run down? Yeah, why haven't you been paying attention I mean, downloading every single episode since you've been on there? Yeah, why are you about? supporting the gimmick Why aren't you on the website right now looking at yeah. all my beautiful covers that I made for these episodes? I, I believe the only show that was worth listening to was seven months ago. <laughs> Well, thank and you for the since support. then, we've been running up and down town, every town, killing towns, winning championships, and staying busy, and staying boozed up and hungry like noise pollution does. So, I mean, what do you want us to tell you? Woo! 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 I think it says it all right there. So, I just fact-checked myself. Your first episode, episode six of The Gimmick Table, which is available for download at GimmickTablePie.com. Uh, no gimmicks required. Uh, air quotes on the gimmicks. Noise pollution. Premiered on Monday, August 14th, 2017 at 9 a.m. 
How is that almost to the day? Because this episode will air on Monday. Oh, air date. August 12th. So we probably spoke to them roughly around this day on. Last time Jupiter passed its moon cycle. Right. Yeah, totally, dude. Who, who does your demographic? <laughs> Lip, 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 podcast at 9 a.m. At 9 a.m.? Well, I yeah. did, for one. Yeah. I waited until I, I did. But it's not I like... I, I think I also... Uh, I think my mom did, too, actually. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Thank you, Max's mom. Thank you. Um, but no, you. it's not like you can only listen to it for that hour, Rock. It doesn't go away forever. It's still there. You can actually go listen to it right now if you haven't heard it yet. Yeah, well, well hey, hey well, not, not to cut you off, but uh, somebody find me a battle of uh, ragu and a garden hose. I think we need to get an IV started for old Benjamin Banks down there. <laughs> Uh-oh. <laughs> just, just wave that yeah, pie in like, front of his face. <laughs> So now we don't find it comfortable. That's kind of weird. Now, let me kind of flip the switch here on you because you said you've captured gold since the last time you've been on the show. So perhaps we are, you know, the catalyst, or maybe we're the reason. That was what I was getting. That was what I was getting ready to bring up and tell you. Fun little trivia fact, there, gentlemen. (laughs) Four days after that last show aired, Noise Pollution captured our first set of gold in Orange County, Virginia, at Ultimate Championship Wrestling, where we became their first tag team champions. To which we still have those belts today. We well, we're not going to give them back. (laughs) Even if you lose, you're keeping them. Uh, what? (laughs) <laughs> yeah, we're not losing those. <laughs> oh, that's what you're going with on that one. I'm sorry. Yeah, we're not losing those. That's out of the question. Dude, we took b- bars of gold and forged those belts in the fires of hell. Those titles ain't going nowhere, Daddy. So what I'm getting from all this, just go back, to go back to my point, is that the gimmick table is the reason for your success. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Correlation. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I ain't gonna uh, get I, I see where you're trying to go with that, but do you guys got? I, I say we can give them, we give them a little bit of credit for that because you know we got all hyped up and amped, all that happy jazz, so we could go in there and you know just wreck shop when we got to Orange County, and you know you saw how that turned out. We we became champions because we killed fools. Well, we are. We, we got drunks and just beat people up and took belts. Well, all I have to say to is that, that is, is that, you're welcome. <laughs> Oh, man. No, hey, is anybody else here drinking? Is anybody else drinking? Or is noise pollution the only one drinking? Uh, you guys well, drinking? Uh, if, it, if it serves me correctly, aren't you guys, uh, how is your brewing business going on, man? Last time we talked, you guys we, were we talking have... about brewing beers and stuff, man. Have you put out that noise pollution beer you said you are going to give us and stuff yet? Well, we have Do we a, have a noise pollution beer yet? We have a white Belgium sitting up in my pantry. We haven't actually brewed it yet. A white Belgium sitting up in my pantry? That sounds... <laughs> So bad. Well, that's what it is. It's a white Belgium. It's a white Belgium ale. We're what? talking about beer. There's not a white Belgium person in my pantry. I think you should call that Dan Dan. That's a good beer. <laughs> that's a good name. The problem is, I forgot to buy the sanitizing solution last time I was at the brew store. Other problem is, is uh, that the brew store is only open, the only day I can go is Saturdays, and they're only open till 2 p.m. I don't usually get up that early. And if I do, I'm busy. And I forget to go. All right. Life well, sucks. If you get up that early, you can rest assured to listen to a wrestling podcast at 9 a.m. Look, just you because... Could do that on, you can do that on the way to the brew store. Somebody explain to me, what is the, what is a brew store? It's where, it's, it's like a, a store that sells yeah. stuff to brew alcohol. Uh, yeah, we have uh, wine, beer. It's like, called so it's like a sex shop for beer. Pretty they got much. Some, he used to have some uh, hydroponic equipment in there, too, but I don't think he does that anymore. Mm, so you say? I just intriguing. I just go there and buy brew kits. Is that is that, the, is that what they're calling those nowadays? Brew kit. I mean, I guess the technical term would be a box filled with items to you, brew up you, beer. With, are you cook but, you cooking up them uh them amphetamines? Cooking up some. There's actually a crack crack buzz down the street from us today. There was. Yeah, thirty three. With your little with your with your little brew kit. Oh, that's probably the two black trucks that I saw drive by last night, yeah, one by like one. Fe- it was like a federal. Yeah. yeah. I'm like, you don't see two black, <laughs> you two black trucks like that, just back to back, like within inches of each other. The, the old GMC Suburbans. You should know better by now, this is the gimmick table. 
<laughs> yeah. We already know they're up to no good. We first of all, we are the most professional wrestling podcast ever. I'm the most professional human ever. Ask anybody. I am. I everybody I know tells me I'm the best and most professional person. All, all six of those people that got up at 9 a.m. to listen to your podcast. Well, they like probably got up in time to go to the brew store too. <laughs> maybe, maybe you did. Rock, you are just throwing the low blows today. Four of them were in your were <laughs> in your hatch bag. Like, come on, God, we'll listen to our podcast while we go to the brew store. Hey, somebody put a mirror under Benjamin Banks' mouth and see if he's still breathing. <laughs> All right, guys, let's let's talk some wrestling. Now, you said you've been up and down the East Coast. Have you got the opportunity to wrestle for any new promotions? You know, I tell you, we've been in such on, on such a tear up and down the Mid Atlantic area. I can't even remember the promotions that we've been wrestling for. You know, in the past seven months, I got to be honest with you. I mean, it's just you know, it's, it's all starting to blur together. And every morning I wake up, it's like we got some new championships, and just keep rolling with the punches, brother. Dude, man, I we just get in the car and we go, and it just seems like it seems like the trend is that every time we get in the car, we find ourselves in a new place, and we end up whooping ass, and then we end up getting drunk, and then we wake up with gold draped across our, our faces and stuff. So it's like I don't know, it, we seem to be doing something right. I mean, it's we might have won it, we might have forgot to give it back. You know, <laughs> either way, either way, it's ours now. Right. <laughs> so you guys got like a gold vault somewhere. Right? So it really doesn't matter if it's if you're actually you know participating in the event. You might just go there, beat up their current tag team champions in the back, take their tag team titles, and skip town. Well, got to be honest with you, this uh, we've had the opportunity to face several of the champions in the, in this. Uh, you know, I almost want to say territory, but I know those don't really exist anymore. But what you know, uh, the Mid Atlantic territory, and uh, yeah, we've had plenty of opportunities, and uh, you know, win some, lose some. Luckily, we've won more than we lost. I would say. But uh, I'll tell you what, we've definitely been keeping busy, that's for sure. But um, if you guys would have been keeping track of that over the last seven months, you would know that already. No, hey, wait, hey, whoa, whoa, whoa. We pay attention, all right, all right, all right. You got to understand, we're very busy. You got to understand the time for a weekly podcast. I have to invest in my guests for that week and give them full focus. So, yeah, sometimes I do fall behind on what's going on in the world of noise pollution. Yeah, I follow you on Twitter. Yeah, we retweet your stuff. We share stuff that you post, all right? We're doing our job. I sounded like a cranky old man. Uh, there. <laughs> well, let me let me ask you this: what uh, what the heck have you guys done in seven months that's uh, n- noteworthy? Yeah, what's going on with you? What have you? Yeah, what's done? going on in, in the world of podcasting? Oh, actually, we set up a whole orphanage in West Africa just last month. So I don't want to hear it. Really? Yeah, no, we went over I there and that. built it with our own and bare hands. We took a team of like 20 people we knew, Cade went with us, and we built this orphanage. And we got like th- at least 35 kids adopted that week, weekend. I mean, it was crazy. So, yeah. Well, what you got to say? know is that uh, you, uh, somebody got hard up, sold your mixer, and now you're working with some piece of junk you got. <laughs> well, no, <laughs> nobody sold the mixer. I'm just too lazy to go get it. Oh. <laughs> Uh, uh, sure. Whatever you say. But no. <laughs> um, outside of you know running the podcast and, and setting up orphanages and setting up orphanages, which in apparently- West Africa. <laughs> In West Africa, apparently. Uh, myself and our sound guy, Cade, the silent guy over here in a $5 billion Supreme hoodie. Yeah, what? Um, who says Gucci like it's his job. Uh, we help Excite Wrestling now with their Twitch stream. So he works the sound, and I monitor the live stream, make sure everything's looking I good. I watch it. And he watches it from home and makes sure everything looks good for the audience. Yep, I do what I can for them. So I've been doing that. I usually go down oh, to the... Is that like on a website or something? Yeah, Twitch. Twitch.tv slash Excite Wrestling. I feel like I'm just doing plugs this episode. <laughs> I'll I'll, uh, I'll make sure to let them know where they can send the uh, royalty check for that shameless plug. Well, we don't charge for plugs no. for promotions or wrestlers, man. All right. It's what we do. Yeah, we okay. might charge you guys. <laughs> yeah, we, yeah, maybe we're going to we're charging you guys per minute for this episode. <laughs> really? Man, we should be charging you guys. <laughs> you guys have been doing good in the world. Yeah, we're trying to help, you know. Cade, first wrestling event he's working. Never worked one before, and he was doing sound. He did a good job. Didn't 
I think you what you only screwed the music up once and that wasn't really your fault. You got the signal too early. Yeah. You know, doesn't know a lick about wrestling, but enjoys doing sounds. Or, or you hear that that, that noise that, that the computer makes when you click on the song. That's <laughs> you play, yeah. <laughs> What? You know, the whole the, the show the, the show isn't just made up of wrestlers. There's a lot of other you know for the two guys that are in there or four guys that are in there actually wrestling. There's probably eight or ten guys that are behind the scenes making that possible. You know, uh, we always uh, reluctantly to admit it, but you know we always appreciate what guys do behind the scenes. Cause, yeah, because we like we like watching our matches when we're done. We like you know not having to shoot uh, selfie promos with our own phones and things like that. So, being able to look at professionally made photos that aren't taken from a phone. Right, the, the, the unsung hero. Uh, well, de- we definitely like to give all the uh, everybody a little bit of credit. I mean, shoot, it takes a whole team to get wrestling shows up and going, man. It ain't just the guys in the ring. So, on behalf of Noise Pollution, we'll go ahead and humble ourselves for a second and say thank you for your contribution to what you do to help the wrestling community. Oh, well, you- that's to all the guys that put together the ring, all the guys that running the cameras, all the guys in the session stand, the guys that are putting together the stages, putting together the trucks, people taking the tickets, the people putting up the signs around town, people making the phone calls, getting the sponsors in, all that stuff. It's definitely been one of the coolest experiences, definitely just from, you know, going from a fan doing a podcast to like, hey, you want to help out with a Twitch stream? Of course I do. It's, you know, you definitely get to learn oh, a lot. Now, are you guys, uh, are you long-time wrestling fans? I don't know if we asked you that. Yeah. yeah, you interviewed us. A little, you interviewed us you know, last time about all this. You don't remember, Rock? You didn't. I listened to the episode beforehand to get a little refresher. I didn't. Wow. Oh, you did? Well, Man, I, I, I didn't know there. Was, I didn't know there was going to be homework. It was. It was pre homework. You had. You had to do it before you started the class. or it was insta fail. Yeah. See, I'm always prepared. I didn't even uh, know. I didn't even know I was interviewing you guys tonight. I thought I was interviewing Benjamin Banks, and I got noise noise pollution <laughs> yeah, questions but, on hand at all time. <laughs> and you'd listen right. to their episode. Well, not knowing they were going to be on. fun with it. Then we'll, what uh, what question? Ask us a question you were going to ask Benjamin Banks. <laughs> yeah, let's go ahead and call yeah, All right, you all these quest- questions that well, were written for Benjamin Banks on these sheets of paper. All right, well, here's me. one for you. This was for Benjamin Banks, so maybe you can answer this and you can tell us how how it's helped you. How has the Fat Man movement helped shape your guys' <laughs> careers so far since you started it? Uh, it describes like yeah. So, how has the Fat Man movement helped your career, Rock? <laughs> well, um. <laughs> I'll answer too. I don't care. Yeah, uh, like that describes like ninety percent of the wrestling fans. So it's just helping my career immensely. <laughs> Damn, you got it. Ouch. What about you, Mac? The Fat Man movement is helping my career because the Fat Man know how to cook, and they keep the mad one and the relentless one fed so we can build our muscles and go out there and whoop ass. So they're helping our career quite well. A little more positive answer than other people on the episode they're right now. solid. They were both solid. <laughs> Speaking of the Fat Man movement, did Benjamin Banks the Twitter thing? I think Benjamin Banks just crapped his pants, man. I don't know if y'all can smell it. <laughs> y'all smell that? I, uh, I don't think he is. He alive? Yeah. You guys make sure he's alive. At least. Can you kick him for us? Yeah, I got him, dude. Hit him with that frying pan. See if he wakes up. Yeah, that'll that'll work. Uh, How about that? Work? <laughs> Man, Get up, Banks. He's out, dude. He's done. All right, we'll just let him All sleep right, it off some more. We'll, we'll... He's, he's out, dude. He's out searching for the Dragon Balls right now, man. He's <laughs> gonna get. Into it. All right. All right, guys. So on a serious note, what you guys have seen a lot of growth. What do you truly attribute to the growth that you guys have seen as a tag team? Uh, I, I personally think it's uh, a serious answer here. Um, just, you know, traveling around, working with, you know, uh, a vast array of different teams. And, you know, it's like kind of on the job training, applying the trade. And, you know, the more the more people you work with, the, the better versed you become. And I think some of the things, you know, the, the rough the edges are getting polished and you know everything the pieces are starting to fall into place you know but overall just you know keeping our noses clean and doing what uh what we were trying to do you know both in and out of the ring 
That's it. That's uh, the tie on to what Rock was saying, keeping our noses clean. And we're also the kind of guys that, you know, we're not going to stay quiet in the locker room or whatever. Not in the sense of causing trouble, but in the sense of we are hungry to learn because we want to be the best at everything we're doing. We want to be the best noise pollution we can be. So we're constantly asking questions. We're constantly watching matches. We're watching guys. We're working with guys that are teaching us things. We're just keeping our ears open. We're keeping our minds open. And we're doing everything we're supposed to be doing. And we're putting in the work. And the work is paying off. And a lot of that just ha- comes from us doing what we were told through our training, like he was saying. Because our tr- our, uh, we were trained by a former NWA champion. Is he still champ right now? Uh, I, I think. don't know. I'm not sure. But we were trained by the Mid-Atlantic badass. Plane. And one of the things he instilled in us was definitely to keep working hard and make sure we do things the right way. Yeah, he was, uh, fortunately, uh, we had someone who not only taught us to, uh, quote unquote, wrestle good, but taught us the business, you know, and the, and the, the business portion of it is what's keeping us so busy. I mean, <laughs> me, me and the mad one only wrestle so good, you know, that's that's not what's doing it for us. But our game is that we're, we're talking well, we're doing business well, we're not yeah, we're throwing off, really. and we're not pissing off the wrong people, we're not showing up to places looking like complete jerks, we're not being jerks to the everybody this and that you know we're going out there and building good reputations for ourselves and that's what's getting us uh, a lot of these opportunities that have been presented to us is because we've uh, proven that we're trustworthy with uh, taking the ball and running with it so people are believing in us because wanting to work with a bunch of guys is the easy part getting those guys to want to work with you is a different story like I'll be honest with you I think it's kind of cool now that we're at the point where when we first started that we were walking into locker rooms we're like all right kid this is what we're gonna do and now we're walking into locker rooms and guys are coming up it's like oh man we get to work with noise pollution this is going to be awesome so that's a huge shift for us that's definitely uh a good thing for us that, that's yeah, awesome. gonna pass uh exactly what matt is saying Especially when you start getting like, you know, guys that you've shared the locker room with when you were first starting off in your career and you haven't really seen them in a while, but you start getting like these uh, surprise like Facebook messages like, hey, brother, you know, I've been watching what you're doing and, you know, keep up the great work. Super proud of you. Uh, those things are kind of like kind of bring it all home, you know, that or, uh, you know, when you talk to your trainer and he's telling you like, you know, how proud he is of you because, you know, unbeknownst to you, you know, a bunch bunch of guys are messaging him saying, hey, you know, you, you train these guys well or, you know, they're that's kind of a, a big payoff for me anyway. Me too. And on top of that, when we go to a place and the promoter walks up and says, hey, I know you guys are going to be fine. I've already talked to your trainer and I trust him, so I trust you. So that's definitely a huge compliment for us. And it, at the same time, it's a compliment for him because we're keeping our reputation clean, which is helping his reputation that he didn't train a couple chuckleheads, you know what I mean? Right, yeah, and we've we've spoken to you know, trainers that we've, people who train in the past uh, who have been on the show, and that's the one thing that they say is that, you know, they, they preach that, you know, if you're going to go out there don't make a fool of yourself because it's not just your name, it's my name as well. Definitely good that, you know, and it pays off. If you think about it, you know, the better you act, the more likely you are to get bookings, the more people are going to trust. Symbiosis. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. And it's like on top of that, going into these places and being, being able to offer more than just, hey, I can walk in the ring and wrestle and do this and that, but be able to walk in and be like, hey, we can offer this to possibly help you in another area of this company to help maybe promote something or, hey, you need us to help put up a ring or, hey, you need us to take care of anything, whatever you need, we got you. And that stuff goes a long way, too. And that's part of 
we're just doing business the right way because you walk into a business, you walk into a company, and that becomes your job. And all you're trying to do is help elevate and help help the company grow, which the more you do that, the more they're willing to invest in you, and everybody makes out in the end. And that's and that's how we practice, man. We practice exactly yeah. how we play. We just keep it straight. Every, every, everyone can use that, that versatile player. You know, when you show up into a, uh, a locker room on the indie scene, you know, chances are you haven't really got a clue what you're going to be doing until, you know, you actually get there. And so if you're that guy that can go and open up the show or that guy that can give you that awesome uh, mid-card match or the guy that can go right out there and just walk and talk in the main event, whether you can and be, you know, baby or heel, whatever's needed and do all those things, you know, you become an asset to the locker room and that's, that's going to open up a uh, lot of doors. So basically what you're saying, and forgive me for the pun here, but it sounds like whenever you guys walk into a show, they want to turn the volume. And we're the guys that will help them turn the volume up. Yes, sir. That's what they want. You know, that we're 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 the uh, we're the can do guy. Hey, brother, can you? Yep, we can do that. Hey, do you mind doing? Yep, no problem. Got you. Yeah, that's, I mean that's what makes the show as good too. Is like get a little spontaneity to it. Oh yeah, the guy comes in and says, "Hey, man, you know." Can you guys give us a hot opener? We got you covered, you know. Hey, can you guys put on a main event? We got you covered. And at the same time, as much as we're helping them by being so available, ready to do this kind of stuff, it's helping us as just overall performers, overall wrestlers, overall everything that's trained us for all kinds of different situations so that when these when these opportunities arise, we're going to be ready to back in the call. So it gives us a chance to be able to work with all kinds of different people in all kinds of situations and and have almost every corner covered. You know, I mean, wrestling's one of those, it's like the wheel that never stops. It's perpetual. It constantly goes. And you're forever learning. You're forever going. You're forever picking things up. But the more you're doing it and picking up and learning, that's it. You learn to be able to adapt to any and all situations as they come. And that's what we're trying to do. That's pretty much where we're at in our journey right now. Definitely, and it's a good attitude to have. And, you know, the reputation that you built, like you said, it, it gives you the ability to go out there and get more experience in the ring it allows you to also get more exposure for the brand that is noise pollution and kind of leading into that how have you gone about building your brand of noise pollution really and gearing that towards the fans how have you gotten your out so how have you gotten yourself out there to the fans well i mean what was it like a week or two i think Braun Strowman put us over on raw <laughs> Yeah, I mean, they they the name all over the major uh, network up north. Now, was that Bro- God, man? I think I, I think I heard Elias say noise pollution like twelve times in a single promo. Yeah. yeah, we don't we don't really know what's going on with all that, but we certainly appreciate the publicity. Thank you. Yeah. Thank I've you, sir. So, I've gotten so many messages of people saying, you know, hey, when are you guys coming out? Uh, you know, my uh, the, the views and likes and all that on the social media skyrocketing. So we appreciate that. You know, thanks for helping. us. Our business, uh, WWE. Appreciate you, Derek Thank you, sir. <laughs> now, now, outside of the WWE, Max, who, how have you guys, independently on your own, kind of built that brand going forward since we last spoke? Set almost seven months to the date. <laughs> We're just out. Th- we're just out there banging and clanging and doing what noise pollution does. We're drinking beer. We're cracking skulls. We're winning championships and doing the drives, man. That's how we're getting this brand up and moving. We keep our social media game tight. We keep our ring game tight. We're constantly learning and moving and being dependable, and people are catching on. I know uh, we've become quite popular at our home promotion here in Virginia over at BCW. Uh, just recently, we had a we had a kind of against their uh, tag team champions, the Hellcat. And it's not the first time we faced them before, but it was definitely different than the first time we faced them because as we came out as challenge, the crowd was chanting our name so loud you couldn't even hear, we couldn't even hear our own music. And it was unfortunately... kind of like noise pollution. It very kinda much loud. was. And unfortunately, we came up short due to some cheating ways by... <sighs> Man, we will anyway. pay those guys back. Don't worry about that. Yeah, we're oh god pisses me off, God damn it. So, but either way, we lost, we, we lost, and they were still chanting their name as loud as when they started. That's what I got. It's like, All right. that's something. Yeah, How's that make- um, too, when you, uh, 
all the all the stuff that we just mentioned about how we're advancing our brand and the business is kind of an also the same reason that our brand is advancing and growing with the band. You know, me and for me and the Mad One, it's like it's the term gimmick is kind of it's almost like a cliche because this is pretty much our real lifestyle. It's it, not much, yeah. it's not an act. Not much of us has really had to change. And so I, I, I think when you when you actually believe what you're doing and you really are, you know what you're doing it's very very easy for people to accept that and to associate with it you know no, they, when they, you, see us, they, they want to they want to party with us they want to be part of what we're doing yeah yeah you guys always you always have the volume turned up as far as it can go and i mean you you walked in and knocked benji out so you could be on our show obviously you guys you guys bring the heat <laughs> And and that's one thing with him talking about uh, how we've been able to uh, build our brand over the last seven months. People are catching on, but over the last seven months, they're catching on because over that time, we gradually become more and more comfortable with just being ourselves. And that's what the people are grabbing on to, and that's what they believe in, and that's what they want. And that's why we've been... Uh, I think that's why we've been successful up to this point so far. It's because, like Rock, like the Relentless one said, he wants everybody wants to come party with noise pollution. Now they're believing in noise pollution because they're beginning to get the full noise pollution experience because they're getting more and more of us each and every time that we come out there and perform for them. They they, they believe in us, and the truth, the you know, reality is easy to believe in. And we are who we are. It's not a, you know, it's not a uh, since you like this rock a pun pun intended it's not it's not a gimmick for us no, we live rock and roll man we are rock and roll we're loud we're obnoxious we drink a lot we like to fight and we like to party and that's what the crowd likes to do too so we are that outlet for them I mean it sounds like a fun love time. Us, women adore us and men want to be us and I <laughs> and think then, I, so, I ripped that line off from somebody <laughs> I don't know who but I mean uh, hide your daughter you hide your wife <laughs> Well, well, I think. Good. Well, I think you two are well, all, awesome dudes, and I would love to party with you. And I don't, I don't want to be you. Well, that's well, good because not, not, not everyone, <laughs> not everyone can admit it to themselves. So. I was gonna say that's good because I don't want you to be me either. It's hard enough being. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't think you want to be a vegan either. Oh, don't even get me started. Don't even get me started. What? What? what actually, is that actually, anyway? actually, do. Actually, actually, not even gonna lie. Not even gonna lie. Hold on, Rob. I cried something vegan last month, and it was delicious. Have you ever had a but? Have you ever took butternut squash? What is it? it was no. Like an egg, it was no. An egg? I mean, you don't even have to tell me the rest because I've never taken butternut squash. <laughs> I'm not. I'm, I'm not. I'm not talking to you. I'm talking to Scout. Uh, I've also never <laughs> taken a butternut squash anywhere either. Dude, take it was a butternut. It was an acorn butternut squash, and it had mushrooms and onions and chickpeas and soy sauce. That shit was. Oh, I, and then I got drunk I and passed out. Yeah, that's that's. I mean, that's some good food. That's that's technically vegan, yeah. But you could also add bacon to that, and it'd probably be a lot better. Matt just went into the kitchen and actually grabbed a butternut squash, and now it's sitting on the table. <laughs> <laughs> we use it to make. Yeah, I don't want to know what you use it for. <laughs> it's a very large butternut squash, so I don't want to know either way what you use it for. I, I cut it up, boil it. <laughs> blend it and then put it over macaroni and it's like macaroni and cheese it sounds fucking disgusting it's delicious actually it doesn't sound that bad but boom you put you put butternut squash and macaroni and cheese no i i he well, makes that fake, what you just said? he makes fake aroni and cheese i make fake aroni and, I make, with butternut squash and oh noodles. the fake aroni yeah that's with that vegan cheese isn't it no i don't know like there's no, or something he uses the butternut squash as cheese because that's Obviously the same thing. Wait a minute. You use the butternut squash as cheese? Butternut, su- uh, butternut oh. squash oh. and cashews, and you blend them into like a sauce, like a, and it almost looks like a cheese sauce, and it tastes fucking delicious, and you put it over macaroni yeah. and cheese. But that's not macaroni and cheese. Right, that's I know. macaroni and butternut that squash is not cashew. not macaroni and cheese. You are speaking <laughs> blasphemy. <laughs> How it's, dare you? Yes. Because like, wow, I can call it whatever I want. Game macaroni and cheese with such filth. It's my it's my podcast. If I want to call it <laughs> macaroni and cheese, I will.
I'm gonna sit here and slowly. Wackaroni and cheese. Wackaroni and cheese. Wackaroni and cheese. Not even gonna lie, I'm writing this down for the Mad Maiden when I get home. I can actually, if, <laughs> Max. If you want, I can send you the recipe. You're gonna cook her a nice dinner, and she's gonna love you for it. I'll have I'll have my girlfriend yeah. send me the recipe, and then I'll send the you the recipe. <laughs> I mean, we could fix him a bowl of ma- wackaroni and cheese. <laughs> Who, Benjamin? Is he alive? Yeah, yeah, he's somewhere. Oh God, where'd he go? He, he just got up and left. Hold uh, on, let me check. Let me check under the couch. Check for let a blood trail. <laughs> He probably scared him. I mean, his frying pan will do that. Good, good. He probably needed to. He needed one. He needed a good scare. That guy's a wuss. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <my>. Aww. <laughs> now, you, you, you touched no, that. I've, I've got stories that I'm not going to share on this podcast about old Mr. Benjamin Banks. <laughs> but I feel like you hey, kind of have bet, to at least let you, one slip now. I bet if you wake up Benjamin Banks, you won't even know that uh, he's been knocked out for the entire show. Like when you wake him up, just pretend like, all right, and that wraps it up with Mr. Mr. Benjamin Bank. He probably won't yeah, have a different. Just shake and be like, oh, thanks, guys, for having me. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Wow. Oh. Wow. Are, are you just mad because, like, his episode is still within the top five of most downloaded episodes of all time? I'm just mad because I live mad, dude. That's rock. That's true. That's true. Your <laughs> name is Mad Max. Fair, I mean, fair, fair point. Fair point. point. You win. You win. Is that a rhetorical question? <laughs> Is, is Mad Max bad? I mean, you're still our only duo. Yeah, we haven't had any other tag teams. Well, let's keep it that way. Let's uh, make this like a annual thing. Maybe like even a quarterly thing. Yeah? A quarterly. It could be fun. Every, every, get a quarterly report. Every seven months. Every seven months. That's, yeah, right. that's every, twice a year. We'll, we'll gonna, try and put it in twice a year. You're going to knock out Urban Legend next time when we try to interview him? Oh. Oh, don't tempt me. <laughs> no. Give us that offer. Give us that opportunity. What's your beef there? <laughs> <laughs> uh, we'll swerve the earth. <laughs> oh, all, all joking aside, we, we, we've, we've got history with uh, Mr. Urban Legends, so it's all good. I'm just, I'm over here playing. No, that's, that's what I figured. <laughs> I would love to know the context that that was created behind. What what what, what was created behind? Swerve the Earth. Swerve the Earth? Because we're talking about swerving urban legends. Yeah, no, I mean, when when did you first coin that phrase for him? Was there was there like oh, a, a shoot, moment? Man, you know, you know, Urban he trained with us, so we've been calling him that for what three years now. Nice. Yeah, I think four four years for me because that was uh yeah because he was there when I started training. I guess I was more imagining like you guys out for drinks at the bar and some chick denies him and you're like, oh, she swerved the earth. <laughs> oh, <laughs> <Let me see>. <laughs> what? <laughs> Oh, sorry. <laughs> um, there's been a couple of nights we've been at with uh, Swerve and Irvin, and uh, I'm not going to comment on those. I'm not going to put the man out like that. It's all good. <laughs> all right, we'll, we'll just leave it at that. We'll just leave it at that. As loud as, let's just say he's not as loud as noise pollution. <laughs> Well, I don't think anybody's as loud <laughs> yeah. as noise pollution. That's the point, isn't it? You're, you're the loudest noise in the room. Right. Next to uh, Mr. Benjamin Banks gnawing his ass off. <laughs> <laughs> Cotton wood over there. Now, you did, you did, you did. I'm going to ask a wrestling question. We're going to get one in here. Uh, you did say you've had the opportunity to work with more teams, get more experience. Uh, Max, if you want to start, anyone in particular that you face that's kind of push, inspired you to push yourself even more? Um, I'm really not all that sure on that one. I know everybody we've been in the ring with makes us want to be better. I know who I want to wrestle, but that's not the question at hand. I'm going to go ahead and pass this one off to the relentless one. But say that question again, sir. Well, I don't know. Maybe like anyone in particular, like surprise you with what's going on with their, with them right now. Like somebody you met and you're like, oh wow, this, this, pretty this cool is guy. why you don't ask questions. Well, your gonna, questions I'm, are just written that that wasn't written. Written badly, <laughs> as I said, Rock. You've, you said earlier you've been able to work with more teams. Is there any particular team that you've worked with that's kind of inspired you to push yourself harder? Yeah, I think you know you could just really uh, say all of them. Um, you know, I, I started training when I was 35, so like honestly, and this is 
taken away from any of the teams that we've worked with or anything like that. Right now, my uh, biggest, uh, let's see, what's, what's, what's the word I'm looking My biggest inspiration to uh, better myself and to work harder is the fact that uh, I'm running out of time to do any of this, really. So, I mean, I'm not at the end yet, but I'm not starting with the, uh, the amount of time that the average wrestler has to, like, perfect his craft. So, I, I always have a reason to stay, like, motivated and more than, more so maybe than the next uh, fellow. All right, so there's a, there's a sense of urgency there because you don't have the time, so you're kind of already inspired. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to try to squeeze a 20-year wrestling career and probably five to eight good years that I'll have of wrestling. Now, one thing I've always wondered about, especially with the tag team, we talked kind of about brand as well. Um, how do you settle any kind of creative differences that you have? Well, there isn't really uh, many creative differences to settle. Um, we're two separate individuals rules that coexist so i mean as far as like you know you're never going to hear me whine about you know what color tights the mad one is wearing or you know i'm not going to be like oh man you know i don't like the way your wrist ape looks and he, he does his thing and i uh i do my thing and we have a very much uh a symbiotic relationship you know we don't we don't really step on each other's toes as far as that concerned we, we have, actually have a saying where you know whatever brothers you're after the gimmick like that we respect each other it's like decisions on things, you know, and if there anything comes up where it's like, hey, brother, I think I have an idea for something. You know, we just like any civilized human being, we just discuss it, you know, and that's how uh, discussions and uh, yeah, they definitely <laughs> practice an honor among thieves. That's it. We respect each other, and it's like, hey, brother, uh, this is what I think, and hey, I'm down or I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> right, yeah. I normally, and I normally don't promote things and, and, and things that don't uh, that don't pay me, but uh, we actually have, we use a very cool uh, app called, uh, what's it called? Band? Band. Band. And what it is, is it's a, uh, a calendar and almost like a social media as well that we, we both uh, are linked up to. And whenever we have an event or a possible event, we all we do is go on there and we, we post it. And that, I'm assuming this app is created to keep bands uh, informed of each other's, you know, whereabouts and availability. And that's kind of really, really helped us to, uh, you know, keep our schedule straight. <laughs> Max goes on there, and if he's got something going on for next weekend, he goes on there and puts up there, hey, you know, I'm not available for this weekend. So it's either time for me to, you know, go sit back and relax with the old lady or, you know, find a single uh, jam somewhere. That's the thing. It's like if somebody's got a single jam, we respect each other on that day, but and we're in full support. It's like, hey, brother, yeah, go do your thing. I got you when you come home. Yep, I go on there. If I see April, whatever April, let's just say the fifteenth. Max has got something, uh, a band gig, you know, scheduled for that day, and someone calls and like, hey, man, you know, we need you to work, you know, WrestleMania. Well, sorry, brother, my partner's uh, booked through, you know, no uh, like uh, uh, infringement on our personal day. Well, Rock, I hope if yeah. you, if you get booked for WrestleMania, you at least can. Cont- Salt Max before you just say no that maybe he can arrange things and make it to the WrestleMania. <laughs> well, what I, I guess what, what I'm what I mean by that is is I respect his his personal business and his personal space. Right. So if Max tells me, hey, this is I got something planned on that day and I can't make it, I'm not gonna uh, sit there and ride him and give him a hard time. I'm gonna you know call whoever and say, look, sorry, brother, we can't make it. Right. Now you did you did mention this because this was my next question because like I said earlier, I always had my. My noise pollution questions ready to go in case you know you barge in on an interview. Um, but if Max, we invade the show, brother. I, I'm always prepared. Now, Max, how has your success in singles competition been going for you? Oh, uh, well, depends on how you look at. It. <laughs> the matches have been well, but the outcomes have not been in my favor. But it's it's not going to stop me from trying. And I know it's not going to stop the relentless one from going out and trying, but that's also part of the journey that makes it fun too, is that when we're able to break off and go do our Sagal gigs, is we're finding more out about ourselves that we can bring back to the tag team to help build a better product overall. Like, for example, I just had my first opportunity at a heavyweight title in Rona Graphics last weekend. I wrestled I wrestled, uh, I wrestled this cat, his, uh, the Tongan giant Asafi. His uh, uncle is the Barbarian. He's currently the Rage Wrestling Warriors uh, heavyweight champion. Got my shot, and he caught me with a <laughs> 
<laughs> and I was sleeping not as hard as Banks, but it did put me down. <laughs> but the crowd was into it. The crowd was into it the whole time, brother. Well, when but was... me and me and Rock, we encourage each other to do that kind of stuff. We really do because we know it's all for personal growth, and it's going to help us come back and make something dope when we get back in the tag. Yeah, we knew we were still, uh, both like to do same little competition. I mean. Um... I just recently, a month or so ago, wrestled for the first time at uh, the Rage Wrestling Warriors, and that was one of those places where Matt got a singles gig and kind of had a little story running there. So I intentionally uh, stayed away from them because, you know, nine times out of ten, if I show up, then the you know the promoters are going to want to uh, run with us at the tag team. So you know, we got our couple little places where we you know purposely stay away from so that the other person can uh, pursue their goal of a single wrestler. Yeah, we definitely don't like try to step on each other's toes when we're just, when one or the other is trying to go out and build themselves and whatnot. If anything, we're just in full support. And hey, brother, if there's something I can do for you to help, let me know. You know, right? Because it's going to trickle back. Like you said, you get to learn something that in a singles match that you may not have learned in a tag match and you can bring that back to the team it makes you better it's going to make everybody better in the long run 90 percent of your uh your tag team matches is still you know two guys in the in the ring you know going one on one you know so you, you got to be able to wrestle one man before you can wrestle two right now here's one for you we did ask this to benjamin when he came back on the show um rock starting with you um what's the craziest fan interaction you've ever had um craziest fan interaction what kind of words am i allowed to uh say on this radio program it is whatever you want it's rated explicit okay i had, um, I had a crazy old lady in uh tennessee of all places how old um, <laughs> sitting beside me and her and her other crazy friend were man they were doing all kinds of stuff they started blowing the kisses and you know i i, would, I was reaching out like i was grabbing them all and then i turned around and planted every single one of them right on my ass um and you know that got them riled up and at one point uh she mentioned something about a uh, a certain body part being of a certain color, and she said she could smell it from a mile away. <laughs> I remember that. <laughs> oh boy! She, uh, if, if if I'm allowed to be explicit, it, it said something along the lines of, uh, uh, "I bet you got a big one on you. I can smell that black dick from a mile away." <laughs> 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 That's aggressive. Yeah. Yeah, especially from a and, woman who's probably in her 70s. And had no teeth. Yeah. Well, well hey. 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 Have, you, have you tried that out before? <laughs> okay, we're not that explicit. No. no. <laughs> there was uh, one that I think Matt, Max had probably. He, he should probably tell you about this one. It was about this old lady in, uh, I think it was in Georgia. He was sitting uh, there with her attached to her oxygen bottle or something, you know. She's in a real uh, uh, to her oxygen bottle. Yeah, 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 yeah. That was fun. So, one of the first times our trainer took us out on the road with him, we did a three day shot where we ended up in Chattanooga, noise pollutioning it up all night. We went to Albany, Georgia, doing a TV gimmick, and then we went to Pikesville, back to Tennessee, and before we went home. That night in Chattanooga, we made our debut at this place. We did some six-man tag, and there's this old lady, white-haired, 70-something, look, in a wheelchair, hooked up to an oxygen tank, and brother, I felt like I was on fire that night, because I was in a brand new town. I was like, okay, let me go ahead and get my heat. And this lady's like, starts cheering for the guys there because I guess she goes to all the shows. And she's like, yeah, 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 yeah. Well, I'm standing right there on the apron. I turn and face this lady and I go, look here, you old bitch. You better shut up before I come down there and give you a reason to be in that wheelchair. And I shit you not, she got up out of that wheelchair and said, you come and try, you motherfucker, and started giving me a <laughs> we, threatened to, we threatened to come down there and put a kink in her ox to know. <laughs> I'm not going to lie. I probably would have put my money on her. Oh, that was fun. She sounds wiry. <laughs> she probably is pretty screwed up. <laughs> I bet she was. Uh, I bet she was fun in her heyday. Definitely. See, they gotta uh, keep in mind, brother, that 
you know, when you come from, uh, let's just say, a place like, you know, New York, Philadelphia, and there's certain promotions and brands that, that run up there, and the, the wrestling there is, is different the same way that the fans are different. And when you go down south or you start going towards, like, Tennessee and Georgia and Kentucky and, you know, in the Carolinas, it, it's a very completely different world there, and they view pro wrestling very, very different. And, um, it, it's a, a quote unquote it, it's still real down there they, those people want to be in the show and they want to be involved and they will talk shit to you if they don't like you and they will in the same hand they will cheer for you if they do like you I mean it sounds they like don't a... care if you, they don't care if you can do a backflip they don't care if you can fly off the top rope they they want to see uh, knuckles and boots that's it man they're going to hit you with some straight up honesty if they ain't feeling it they ain't feeling it you will feel it if they ain't feeling it we watch. I sat there and watched you guys put on uh, a wrestling clinic, and the uh, people didn't want nothing to do with it. And we went out there and talked junk to them and just punched people in the face, and they were going nuts. They hated our gut. Yeah, I mean, that, that sounds like a fun place for you guys to fit in because you just get to go wild. Um, I mean, we, we, love, we love working everywhere. I, I do personally enjoy going to the more southern uh, states because that you you can you can go there and man have 20 people sounding like a, a stadium crowd you know there yeah, is definitely yeah the south is fun I'll tell you what though we had ourselves a good time when we went up north though daddy when we went up to uh, Massachusetts with uh, the juggernaut yeah we had man time up there. that was a good time now we kind of uh, talked about this last time the, our first interview you know, I re-listened to it today for no reason at all. Um, we talked about how great tag team wrestling has become again. So right now, starting with you, Rock, who are three tag teams you'd like? To- um, well, we've been talking about. Uh, we'd love to get a hold of uh, any any combination of the uh, the Extreme Horsemen. Um, I think that um, we always love fighting with uh, the Cheap Thrills because they're they're a lot like we are, and so that's always a good time. And um, I. You know, there's a little buzz going around because uh, the Red Scorpion, his uh, tag team partner, Mr. Gray Wolf, has, uh, I believe, gotten back into action. And uh, I don't want to say the name wrong. Is it uh, What's the name of their tag team, Mad One? I think it's, a, it's either the Bloodbound Brothers or the Bloodbound Warriors. I believe that is correct, the latter of the two. But either way, I really, really uh, see something totally amazing in the possibility of mixing it up with those two guys. So much so much so that I've actually mentioned it a couple of times now on social media just recently within the past two, three days. So that's, I think that's that's who uh, I'm looking forward to mixing it up with if we get the opportunity. Is there anybody you want to add to that list, Matt? Anybody and everybody. Well, that's vague. But it's all but inclusive. if you if you want me to be specific, I know personally with who we've tangled it up with so far. There's a couple teams that we're trying to tangle it up with right now. There's negotiations in place, which I'm looking forward to personally, uh, for us to uh, take on the Tar Brothers. Uh, Chris and Dustin Tarr. Uh, they were both trained by Taz, and they are some heavy, heavy hitting, heavy hitting motherfuckers. So I, I would love for us to tangle up with them. I have also heard down the pipe that there's a possibility that we may get a chance to tangle it up with two wily veterans who have been the game longer than dang near anybody in our area with as much success as anybody in our area and are about as grisly and violent as anybody that we've come across in our area with a legendary manager leading them to the pack and that would be our trainer the middle-aged badass Damian Wayne and the Tokyo Monster Kahaga managed by Kevin Sullivan and I think my third would be anybody and everybody <laughs> Bring it on! All right, so I'm gonna I'm gonna sw- I'm gonna switch it up a little now. And you can't say noise pollution for this answer because I know you guys well enough that that's gonna be your answer. I then why say, are you gonna ask the question? Because you're, you're I, putting <laughs> stipulations on it. Stipulations, all right. <laughs> Sanctioning the question. Um, Sa- what? No. I don't it's even not. know a stipulation. Yeah, it is. Um, right now, about all the tag team currently active, who is the best? No, we talking like all the way up to the big time, the big league. We talking yes. on the Anybody active. Team. Right now, best tag team out there. 
Can I backtrack a second? Yeah, you can always backtrack. This is the gimmick tape. Cool. <laughs> I think my number my number three that I want to face, me and Rock, is I, I would love for us to take on the, the Heat Seekers because those guys are killing it, and we can definitely have fun with those guys. It's uh, Elliot, Elliot Russell and Sigmund. Where, uh, where are they out of? Uh, Tennessee, I believe. No. And then Nash can probably give you a better answer of uh, who the best tag teams are of all because he, uh, he watches more of the uh, modern wrestling. Than I do. Well, I do recall from our first interview, Rock, that you you do watch a lot of the older stuff still. You got to catch up, man. It's good. Uh, yeah. So who is it, Max? Who's the number one tag team out there? It's hard to tell, brother, because there's tons of good tag teams out there. There's tons of brilliant tag teams out there. The tag teams being, you know, on a up swing and tag teams being the hip thing right now. And I have to say tag teams probably more a dozen more times in the sentence before I give you an answer tag team rest is out of heat than it's been in years so to come up with the best tag team right now in the world of all the tag teams that will hold the crown to being the best what criteria are we working with it's every everyone that's out there it's 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 personal the, opinion yeah who, who yeah. do you like man yeah like take it from a fan perspective say you weren't a wrestler and you were just a fan what's that one team well, that one tag team that you just would even, mark out for. Even though I don't watch a lot of uh, modern wrestling, I, I don't see a lot of their, their stuff. I mean, dude, honestly, from what I see everyone else in NTD, I would get I would young buck, man, because that's all I hear about is like that Bullet Club and all the, uh, you know, all the, the things that they're doing. So, they're, they're, so, making all, so I, they're making all the yeah, money, brother. Yeah, though I don't see much of them, I, if I was to guess as a fan, that's who I'm hearing about the most. Yeah, I mean, they're not just good at marketing. Good. They're good at being a spectacle. That is for sure. I think the Young Bucks are definitely up there because what they've done for wrestling in general to prove that you don't have to be in... you don't have to come from New York, brother, to make New York money. Uh, they're definitely up there for revolutionizing the way a lot of things are done right now. I think me personally, as far as tag teams around right now that I love, I am a big fan of War Machine. Yeah. Hanson, Hanson and Rose, because that's two big, thick, solid guys doing cruiserweight stuff, throwing guys to each other to complete combos. They've got the look. they got the size. they got the aggression. They've got the gold. They've got the resumes. Brother, these guys are killing it. Like, you can put them up against anybody and you're going to get a solid match. So, I say Young Bucks by popular decision, but my personal choice is War Machine. I can't. I mean, if you said either team to me, I can't really argue with them. I mean, like you said, it's really a loaded question, though, at the end of the day. I mean, stalled long enough to get an answer out of you. Yeah, he was trying to just see if I forget about the question, or maybe Benjamin Banks would wake up and there'd be more pandemonium. You know, the question you asked earlier, you know, I try to keep uh, realistic with uh, teams that are available to us, um, you know, you know, I mean, I don't, uh, like I said, I don't know a whole lot about them, but, you know, yeah, dude, sign me up, you know, you just want to book a match for Noise Delusion first, the Young Bucks, <laughs> I'm all, I'm all for it, you know, or you want them, uh, you want to sit up against, you know, War Machine, yeah, let's do it. You want me to book it? Yeah, we'll book that right away. You got, book it, bro. We got, we got the book line. It, I don't, I don't have a ring or that much money, but <laughs> <laughs> I mean, if you want to pay for it, sure, be my guest. Okay. I don't have a promoter's license either, or the money to afford the insurance that's required in New York, or any of that. It's gonna be a lot of money. <laughs> <laughs> now, what are you guys? Is we're we're three months into 2018, you know, so. Seven months from now, you'll be back on the show in October. But what are kind of some of the goals kind of got outlined that you guys have discussed for 2000? Well, what? I, def- I definitely know for a fact because me and the relentless one have had conversations about this day and night for quite a while now. But one of our top goals and priorities is to uh, acquire the Vanguard Championship Wrestling Tag Team Championship and add that to our collection. Yeah, that's definitely up there. Um, you know, we were, we've been, first couple of years in the business, we were just, you know, gobbling up, booking, you know, hitting the road and getting the experience. And so I think this, for, for us this year, we really want to, like, concentrate on getting to work with uh, those solid veteran teams that, uh, that we can really learn from. You know, we learned, to, uh, we learned stuff from working with everybody, but now we're, we're on a quest, uh, you know, to learn those little tiny things that fill in the gaps of 
what you know what we're missing. So we we we're looking to uh to have those uh dream matches, if you will, that we just talked about. Yeah, no, like like Max was saying earlier in the show, it's that wheel you keep it turning. It, I mean, the fuel for that is the experience and the exposure that keeps the wheel moving. Yep. And so we need to want to start learning from some of those guys that have been where we're trying to get to. That's it. We're trying to fill in the gap, learn how to get meaner, learn the tricks to get nastier, learn the tricks to get smarter, learn the trick, all the tricks, and get the experience and just keep growing as a team, as individuals, as a unit, as a brand, and eventually the whole world will know about noise pollution. And it'll all be because of the gimmick table. <laughs> yeah. I've been waiting for you. <laughs> yeah. Now, speaking of your brand, how well, can you know? Oh, go ahead. I was going to say that, you know, in hopes that uh, one day when you got some other up and coming tag team that you're interviewing every seven uh, months <laughs> and you ask them that question, you know, who do you really want to work or who's, you know, the best team out there, then, you know, hope maybe we'll uh, hear our name again. All right, then I, can, I mean, I'm sure it'll happen. And I can brag about how I interviewed you. You know, we we'll want hear the guy say, who do you want? Who do you really want to work? We really want to work noise pollution. Or, you know, who's one of the best tag teams out there? And then I'm sure, though, you'll still put the same stipulation on their question. All right. Besides noise pollution. <laughs> <laughs> I, w- I would let them use their own team, too. <laughs> yeah, you'd let them, like, besides noise pollution, and feel free to say yourself. <laughs> <laughs> Now, speaking of your brand, how can our listeners get a hold of you guys? Because you have a lot more avenues, I believe, on social media than when we last spoke. Um, I, mean, we I, just do, just, I just do the Facebook and the uh, the Twitter deal. Um, then don't we have a don't we have a team Twitter now? I think you do. I think you have a noise. Yeah, we do. It's uh, I think when you go to actually sell it out, there's so many different variants of noise pollution that we are noise pollution one two or something like that. <laughs> All right, so just anybody listening, just go to the show notes and follow it from there. It'll probably be a lot easier. Yeah, yeah. I found it. And if you. Uh, go on Facebook, look up Noise Pollution Rules, and then we'll take you to our fan page where we have pictures, day comments, leave us comments, uh, leave us booking offers, leave us all your hate mail, whatever you want. Give, us, give you our personal address. You can send us like any concert tickets or that you don't want to <laughs> use. Uh, You're not any ear vouchers. No, any, yeah, any beer oh, vouchers? Whoa, uh, whoa, whoa. What is up with wrestlers thinking just people should send them free shit? Yeah, well, this, you are not the first person to come on the show to say that. And we likely won't be the last either. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no free shit, people. If you Unless do, we're writing a you can send it to us. You want us? If you just want to send free shit to people, send it to us. I love. Don't send anybody free shit. We give away free shit on our broke. contests. <laughs> But as you are now, you know, you've been a guest on the show. You can't participate in our contest. I'm sorry. Well, I think you guys should uh, make T-shirts for the podcast and give us each a free one since we've been on your show twice now. Well, we have T-shirts, but... Oh! Like, just just like the T-shirts for the four or five of us to, like... Where well, you have to go to you have to go to our website and purchase one. I don't even get it for free. Oh man, we could have like a little club where we all wear the same T-shirt. Yeah, That'd be cool. Yeah, you, you can go buy them. See, when I mentioned him buying something, he the idea isn't cool anymore. Unless it's Fortnite, but that's free actually. It's so free. Work. Yeah, I keep telling you download it. But you... all right, so where can we catch you guys in the ring again? Whoa. Let me go. Let me go ahead and pull up that handy dandy band app real quick, and I'll tell you. They owe you guys some money. What month are we in again? I believe it's. March 17th at Shockwave. In March, March 17th. Yeah, we're in uh, Beaufort, North Carolina for Shockwave Wrestling Entertainment where we are going to be uh, defending our tag titles against two clowns that uh, we won the titles off of couple months ago the hands of Hades that's going to be a hard hitting fight I know that for a fact and then uh, after that was it April 21st will be a shockwave April 28th will be at UCW in Ashland Virginia yeah that's another that's another company that's on the uh, that's on the rise and resurgence is uh, Ultimate Championship Wrestling from the uh, Richmond Ashland area they uh, have a rich history in uh, Virginia and have uh, resurfaced last year and uh we're very much a part of their uprise so definitely go check those guys out ultimate championship wrestling 
LLC on Facebook or UCW Forever on YouTube and uh, Twitter. All right. Now, do you have any words for your opponents that you'll be defending those titles again? Yeah, uh, don't, be a, don't be a bitch because you are hounds of Hades, so don't come as a bitch. <laughs> yeah. Uh, go get some shots and take a free bath. <laughs> you stinking much. All right. Now, how about an apology for Mr. Banks? Yeah, is he is, is he, he okay? Because right? you know he is our favorite. Yeah, Before we leave, I'd time. like to just know he's okay. Did you know Benjamin Banks when, is my favorite wakes, tag team? <laughs> when he wakes up, feel free to apologize to him. We're, well, I'm not, I don't. Yeah, cause we uh we gotta go, man. It's getting close to last call, so I mean we gotta go. Yeah, yeah we gotta go grab a couple before they shut the bar down. All right, drink one for me. Oh boy. All right, guys, thank you for coming on the show. Uh, we appreciate you coming on, and yes, we will have to do this again in the future. And next time, let's schedule it. Let's not, you know, interrupt the already scheduled interview. You don't have to hurt anybody. Yeah, nobody has to get hurt to come on the gimmick table. This is a very peaceful yeah, well, seven, place. Seven months from now, we're coming back. All right. We can, Whether you like it or not. Well, we'll and you can bank on that. <laughs> <laughs> you can take that to the All right, people, that's a wrap. And thank you for your time today. And we apologize uh, for this quite chaotic episode. We swear we had no idea that that was going to happen. Uh, so I guess, Spats, thank you to our guest today. Noise pollution and an apology to Benjamin Banks is in order, I guess. Yeah, I mean, we wish him a speedy recovery catch up with him later yeah and the best way to wish him a speedy recovery is make sure you subscribe to the show on itunes stitcher google play iHeartRadio, youtube or wherever you get your podcasting fix from you can interact with us on social media to see how benjamin's doing as well you can find us on twitter at gimmick underscore table we're also on facebook and instagram just search the gimmick table wrestling podcast and don't forget to check out gimmicktablepod.com for all our interviews cover arts and contest information when those are happening and when we announce the winners also you can support our friends in the podcasting world order bats they're available on all major platforms including itunes and google play yeah some of them do have periscopes such as the smart spot podcast who are the kings of the periscope then i guess you'd say we'd have the queens of the periscope which is wretched wrestling (laughs) uh you also have that great guy cliff and then that jabberjaw rob at the wna podcast they're all right i guess Roz boar is back they're also going to be doing Boar meets world as well so they're going to be doing dual podcasts so you'll be happy because you get to say what again bass Boar meets world no the other one oh raw is, raw yeah. is boar yeah go to that one let's try this again one. and you get to say what bats Boar meets world no other one i want you to say the other one i'm not gonna do it let's do it come on one time all right one more time and raw is boar let me get my line out, dude. Moving on. And then we have the broadcast. Last but not least, they're from Australia. The real broadcast, not the fake broadcast. And as always, there is no C. C. As always. See, I almost forgot that, you know, because there is actually no C in the Australian. With a K. Yeah. (laughs) Hoss magic. You can just spell it with a K. No, it should be chaos magic. Chaos magic. No, because they spell broadcast. (laughs) All right. And that's the show, everyone. And we'll let you know how Benjamin's doing. We'll confirm that he is okay. Everybody have a good week. Stay safe. See ya.